Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Stepping Stone House Sleep Under the Stars event for 2021. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening, wherever you are right now, whether you're in your lounge room, whether you're in your backyard, your car, in a campsite. We thank you so much for supporting us here at Stepping Stone House. My name is Kieran Lyons. I'm going to be your host for this evening for this very special Sleep Under the Stars event, supporting the great work of Stepping Stone House and raising funds and awareness for all the important work that they do for homeless youth. So we're gonna to kick tonight off with Trey, who is an Aboriginal youth worker at Stepping Stone House, and he's gonna to present to us uh, an acknowledgement of country. How you going? Thanks for that, Kieran. Yeah, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Trey Stewart. I'm a proud Indigenous man from the Wandawandi people of the Yuwa Nation on the south coast of New South Wales. I'm one of the Aboriginal youth workers here at Stepping Stone House, and I'll be presenting to you with an acknowledgement of country. I'm here before you to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we meet. We are meeting on the lands of the Wongal, Kamegal, and Bed Eagle people, the, tradi the traditional owners of these lands and waters. These tribes reside within the larger nation of Eora. The Eora nation stretches from the Hawkesbury River from the north, the Nepean River to the west, and the Wingy Caribbean River to the south. We pay our respects to both elders past, present, and all of those emerging. I would also like to acknowledge the fact that this is, always has been, and always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. So we have an hour packed with so many stories for you tonight, and I'm really excited to get stuck in. First of all, we do have some housekeeping, obviously not that much because it is a a virtual event, so I'm not going to bore you with 10 minutes of housekeeping. Um, but obviously, first rule being it is an online event. And as a lot of you probably are aware, uh, due to lockdown over the last few months and doing a lot of work on Zoom, um, things can go wrong. <laughs> it is online. So we ask for your patience. If there is a hiccup here or there with transitioning, um, just please laugh along with us. I mean, that's how we're going to get through this. Um, also, with respect for our presenters, all participant cameras and microphones are switched off, but we still want to hear from you, of course. So please use the chat function in the bottom center of your screen to respond to the stories you're hearing and also pose questions um, to our presenters. So the theme for tonight's Sleep Under the Stars event is connection. And you're going to hear from people from every corner of the village of Stepping Stone House on what that means for them in a context of ending youth homelessness. I have my own insights on this issue from my participation in the show Filthy Rich and Homeless, which came out last year. So I, alongside four other Australians, experienced homelessness for 10 days on SBS television. And it was without a doubt the most eye-opening experience of my life. And it's quite fitting that the theme for tonight is connection because that's the biggest takeaway that I took from doing the experience is because we, we don't realise how important connection is until we just don't have it. You know, I spent the first few days on the streets on Filthy Rich and Homeless and just had people ignoring me. You know, I went up to people, asked for money, asked for a bit of food and not even getting acknowledged. And for me, I wasn't prepared for the amount of loneliness and isolation that I was gonna feel. So then to go from sleeping on the street to a service very similar to Stepping Stone House, where there was caseworkers and there was activities there for young people and just routine chores, excursions, and it made me realize how important these services are like Stepping Stone House for young people experiencing homelessness because it's not just a bed that they need or a roof 
it's it's a home and you can't expect them to chase their career or study if they don't have those base level needs met. So without further ado, I'm going to present to you right now and welcome to the screen, the CEO of Stepping Stone House, Jason Juretic. Hi, Kieran. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for joining our village to support our children and young people at Stepping Stone House. That's right. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all the 630 people who actually registered for Sleep Under the Stars this year. Just incredible. Um, and also, I'd like to also thank the generous sponsors and donors, uh, the members of the Stepping Stone House board that are with us tonight. And uh, Simon Bird does give his apology able to make it tonight. I'd also like to uh, thank the Stepping Stone Foundation uh, for joining us and for their support. But also all the all those who support our young people, like the mentors, the volunteers, uh, the advocates who are who are advocating to end youth homelessness. Um, you're all part of our village, and yeah, really cannot say enough how how much we appreciate your support and assistance. Uh, COVID has impacted everyone in a profound way, and Stepping Stone House has done what we typically do with adapt, improvise and overcome to bring you this virtual event. Yes, we much prefer being under the Harbour Bridge, as I know many of you do, or, or um, you know, a, a potentially Taronga Zoo, but this virtual is the way we'll shoot for tonight. So um, tonight's event theme, as you heard, is connection. I've always touted the fact that I think connection is actually the most important thing in life. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, for me, it is what's, it's so important. And um, what we have seen is, and what we will see tonight, is some incredible stories from our children and young people who will talk about and what it's meant for them. I'm particularly looking forward to three of our young people have uh, offered to speak and really wanted to. And also one of them has written a song and will be performing that tonight. So that's my favourite part of these, is uh, hearing the youth themselves actually speak. Um, we're also going to be giving you a panel discussion from our care team. They are at the, the they work hard at the cold face. Uh, so they work with our young people uh, to help them become the very best they can be. And you know, I'll be frank, I'm very proud of not only our young people, but also our staff who have pulled together in such an amazing way to help our, our children and young people, especially during coronavirus. This event, Sleep Under the Stars, this seventh year, there's only, I think, four of us who have done the whole seven years, but Last year, we managed to secure 634,000, which was fantastic, the most we'd ever done. This year has completely blown it out of the water. And I wanna thank all of you, over a hundred of you are logged in on this, on this webinar, which is wonderful. And I wanna thank all of you and all those other participants that couldn't join us tonight for, for helping us smash our goal of 800,000, um, which was to support 33. We've now got a stretch goal of 1.1 million for those of you who have been online you will see that we're just underneath that. 1.1 million will allow us to support 45 young people for a whole year with accommodation and all the wraparound services that we actually provide. So uh, with you, I'm confident we can make it happen. But we are jubilantly happy with what we've already achieved. So very well done to everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for everybody who fundraised. Um, if you haven't yet, there is still time. So we really implore and encourage you to um, get online, send a text to some mates uh, or put on social media, uh, just a request for them to be able to sponsor you because the money in the end is really what makes a difference. Uh, so if you are on zero dollars or you haven't been able to um, put a donation on yourself, it would be really wonderful if you can assist. Um, I'd like to thank our, our sponsors, especially our platinum sponsors, uh, Kennard Self Storage. Thanks Sam, Sam Kennard for leading that organization to support us for so many years now. And also Goodman Foundation, Joe Cameron, really, really, really appreciate your support this year. Our gold sponsors, the Chapel Foundation and, and Peter and Elizabeth Walton. Our silver sponsors, DHL Express, have done an incredible job fundraising this year. The RS Foundation and our bronze, our bronze sponsors, Sustainability, who are a recruitment company based in Sydney. If anyone needs any recruitment services at all, give these guys a call. They, they provide a fantastic service and we've used them a number of times. But I'd also like to thank the, the contributors who've actually donated prizes free of charge. All our prizes tonight are free of charge and, and pro bono support as well. 
Um, I'd also like to thank other major supporters who've been with us for the long haul for many years is um, Universal Sony Home Picture Entertainment, which is, um, uh, we've got Jim Batchelor leading that, Kennard's Hire, Kirsty Kovacs, Sophie and, and Angus Kennard. We can't thank you enough, thank you. And Westpac have been with us for many years, Ray Sykes and uh, Matt Lewis, and also Adobe, Suzanne Steele and Sundar, really, really appreciate commitment and help. Um, you're in great hands tonight with Kieran. Um, I will be back a little bit later just to announce the individual and the team fundraising awards. Uh, as I say, there is still time to draw in some donations, so please do it. If you're inspired by anyone who speaks tonight, send a text out to your friends and, and your family, or put a social media uh, post out just requesting for people to sponsor you. Next up, we're gonna welcome Jo Cameron, who's the CEO of the Goodman Foundation, and she's a longtime friend and supporter of Stepping Stone House. So Jo and the Goodman team view this night as an opportunity to connect with each other in a very special way. So Jo, welcome. Thanks so much, Kieran. And hi, everyone. I hope you're all rugged up as I am and ready for both a challenging and a fun night under the stars or on your couch or in your living room. I've been looking forward to this event all week and I'm happy that I found a warm and dry place here on my veranda. I'm Joanne Cameron. I'm the CEO of the Goodman Foundation and supporting and protecting young people is a core part of the Goodman Foundation's mission. We started working with Stepping Stone House probably six years ago now. At that time, they had 12 young people in care, but we knew that they were growing quickly and now they're tracking to their amazing vision to end youth homelessness across Australia. The thing I notice first and every day since we've been working with Stepping Stone House is the difference that they make and the approach that they use with the young people. And I've met many of them over the years. I've sat around a fire at the annual review night and I've heard the difference that Stepping Stone House has made to their lives. And I've also had the opportunity to follow many of their journeys. What Stepping Stone House provide to young people is not just the physical roof over their head, that doesn't make a home. They care about the individual needs of their young charges who arrive at Stepping Stone House at different ages, various lived experiences, and Stepping Stone House work with each of them to build their person, and they do do it with heart. They create homes that are complete with childhood memories and fun outings and celebrate birthdays and Christmases and all those things that families do. They also care about their practical needs and provide them with life skills and support them into further educational jobs. They even learn to drive in a Goodman RAV. Importantly, they learn the give and takes of a functioning family and they learn to grow to be the best forms of the best form of themselves that they can. And I ask you, what is more important than our children, our young people? The young people are the future and they deserve a future full of happiness. And I believe Stepping Stone House can help build the trust and confidence that they need to move forward in their life in a positive way. But you know what? It's been a really tough year for many of us. We've had the COVID lockdowns that lead to lost employment, isolation, which impact the mental well-being for a lot of us across the communities, particularly in New South Wales and Victoria. And I'm sure that those same impacts have been keenly felt by these young people in Stepping Stone House. And this week in Sydney, it's been so motivating to finally be able to move forward, put COVID behind us and rebuild our well-being and our connections. So tonight we're celebrating the beginning of these freedoms again. And most importantly, the, the ability to reconnect with our friends and our colleagues. And this is why Goodman tonight, we're strongly supporting the Sleep Out Under the Stars event. We have team members that are camping in the lounge or outside. We're treating the night as a bit of a staycation, a camping trip in our own backyard. And what better way to break free from the humdrum of months and months of homeschooling and homeworking we're set up, we've got our hot chocolate with our marshmallows, our glow sticks and board games, and we're ready to connect with each other and have some fun tonight. I'm very proud of the Goodman team members participating and to see that their efforts at fundraising have reached more than 16 and a half thousand. Thank you team, that's fantastic. But my way of thanking you and to show the depth of our support to Stepping Stone House, the Goodman Foundation is tonight pledging a further $20,000 onto our fundraising efforts. Now I know that these funds raised tonight are so important for Stepping Stone House to cover the costs associated with their programs and accommodations. However, I'm gonna be cheeky 
and are requesting this the small portion of this additional donation is reserved to give each of the young person in residential care a hundred dollar gift voucher for Christmas from Goodman as well as to purchase or build two fire pits for the houses. As I know the young people enjoy the opportunity to connect around the fire, I've been there. I look forward to joining them all again next year to toast our marshmallows and eat our s'mores. So please enjoy your night, get behind Stepping Stone House in any way you can. It is so critical that we share our resources to lift up those people that need it most at the time in their life that they need it most. So dig deep, let's smash the fundraising targets tonight and show how much the young people at Stepping Stone House mean to us. Thank you, Kieran. Over to you. Have a fun night, everyone. Wow, amazing. I'm sure Stepping Stone House is going to be thrilled with, um, with that surprise announcement. So thank you so much, Joe. Stepping Stone House is very lucky to have your support and everyone at the Goodman Foundation. So next up, we have something very special for you. So Stepping Stone House has an incredible team of caseworkers and youth workers who dedicate their time and energy supporting young people who just want to do better in the world. So I hear all of them were kind of fighting over who was actually going to be talking tonight, but we have four amazing people that work at Stepping Stone House who are going to join us and we're going to have a panel discussion and speak about the youth homeless landscape in lockdown. So on the screen, you're going to see four workers from Stepping Stone House. You're going to see Natasha, who's a youth worker in the residential house, who has been with Stepping Stone House for two years. Trey, one of the Aboriginal youth workers who has been with Stepping Stone House for eight months. Christine, a caseworker for the Independent Living Program, who has been at Stepping Stone House for just under five years and Lexi, a youth worker in the semi-independent living program who has been with Stepping Stone for just over two years now. So let's get cracking. First thing we're gonna discuss is what activities have you found to be the most helpful in keeping the young people connected? So Natasha, you've been with Stepping Stone for just over two years now. What activities have you found uh, have yeah. been helpful? Yeah, so during the lockdown, um, we've noticed that it's a time of uncertainty for everyone, including our young people. And so with that observation in mind, um, the staff team at the residential house um, decided to make activity planners just to kind of instill a sense of routine um, and just so we could come together and have a fun time. Um, and so an example of this that comes to mind straight away is a couple of weeks ago, we had a day um, which was titled Wear Pyjamas to Work. So all the young people and all the staff wore pyjamas all day. And it was just a really fun vibe that was in the house that day. And if I think back to it, the, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is that really makes me laugh every time is um, to see our house coordinator. So normally she's dressed in really smart pants and like a nice top or a blazer. And just to see her walk through the door at 9am in a big fluffy onesie just met, put a huge smile on my face and that of the young people as well. So just kind of coming together and chilling, that was really nice to see that day. Um, another thing that we're doing is we continue to partner with external organisations and members to run workshops in-house. So one of our volunteers runs weekly cooking workshops with our young people, which they look forward to every week and really get a lot out of that time. Um, moreover, we're continuing to provide the young people with uh, workshops and programs that really enhance their skills over this time. And examples of this include online workshops that target online safety and teach the young people those valuable skills, as well as um, workshops on job readiness. So overall, the main thing that I found um, that really kept the young people connected over this tough past couple months was having a sense of routine and also just coming together and having a good time and laughing with one another. Amazing. Thanks, Natasha. And Christine, I'd love to hear your thoughts on activities that are keeping young people uh, connected during lockdown as part of the independent living program. Yeah, sure, Karen. So I suppose um, we actually really noticed a big dip in the mental health um, and well-being of our young people that are in our independent living program. A lot of our kids in the independent living program live out in the community. So when lockdown hit, it hit really hard because they just lost connection with the outside world, like a lot of us did. 
Um, so what we started doing was myself and a few of the young people done a few walks um, over FaceTime. FaceTime just gave that connection where you could see a smile. Um, you could see me probably out of breath on half my walks, but it was really, really good. Um, I also asked my great teammates for our videos of how they were coping with lockdowns. We got some amazing videos from the team uh, doing yoga, dance breaks, the whole lot. Like we've amazing artists and everything on the team. Um, thanks to Oz Harvest and Second Bite, we were able to do a few food packages. And I dropped these off to our young people and they got to get some menu cards and cook up the storm. Um, also in our semi-independent living program, we were the same. We were doing some uh, PJ parties, baking um, classes, the whole lot, played Mario Kart. I don't know about any of you, but I can't play Rainbow Road. <laughs> don't know about you, Kieran. No, I'm terrible at all video games. <laughs> so thank you for that, Christine. Um, we're going to talk about the impacts that the most recent lockdown has had on helping young people rebuild connections with their families. So we'll start with you, Lexi. Yeah, so um, I was having a conversation with one of our young people in the Silk House um, and they were explaining to me that their relationship with their mother has actually become more positive and has actually grown um, stronger during um, the lockdown as they haven't physically been able to see their mum, you know, so they've really been valuing all the time that they're getting on FaceTime and other social media platforms, um, which I just thought was just an amazing thing to hear, you know, despite the COVID-19 lockdown, that they were still still able to have such, a, it was just such a positive impact and yeah, so it was amazing. Ama amazing, thank you, Lexi. And how about you, Natasha? What, what impacts have you seen in the recent lockdown on, on connection with young people and their families? Yeah, so I've definitely observed the impact of not having that face-to-face -face, um, communication and contact over the last couple of months. So as we know, the restrictions um, didn't allow the young people to see their family and relatives over the past couple of months, but they have been staying in contact over the phone. So that includes just calling, texting, even video chatting at times. Um, so that's kind of what the young people were doing during the past couple of months. But now that restrictions have lifted or eased rather, um, the young people are now able to just go out and see their families even if it's for a picnic or just a quiet dinner which has been super positive for them so I guess ultimately what I'd say is um, in a way the lockdown has made the young people and all of us by extension really realize the importance of those family connections and now that we have come out of this time of not seeing friends and family for so long it, it's had us cherish those connections even more amazing thank you Natasha now Trey you have only joined Stepping Stone House uh, quite recently. It was actually during the pandemic. So like, you know, being here only for eight months, have you seen many positive impacts um, on connection with young people and their families through this period? Um, yeah, so I mentioned in one of our meetings the other day that I actually can't speak on this question as best as my coworkers can because they've been here longer and I've actually seen firsthand how it's been beneficial for the young people that we work with. But for me, it's more of how I feel about SSH as an organisation working towards that goal. You know, I have many friends who have been in similar situations and I've seen how the organisations they work with don't really focus on rebuilding family relationships. You know, and to this day, some of those friends, you know, just don't have any family contact or relationships at all, you know. Um, and for me and my culture, being of Aboriginal descent, family is everything, you know, so... For SSH to help young people rebuild them connections is so, so vital, you know, especially in the long run, you know, and I'm just so proud to be a part of an organisation that sees and values that. Thanks, Trey. And do you have anything to add, Christine, on impacts with young people and their families and connections? Yeah, so I actually work with a young um, Aboriginal man of the name of Dylan. Um, like Trey, he really identifies as family is a massive part of his culture, but also his own identity. We check in with him weekly, him and his mom and his family. And I can just say they've gone from strength to strength. I actually really look forward to catching up with him and his mom and hearing what they've got up to. 
um, which is amazing. And then also Dylan is actually really looking forward to coming back to Stepping Stone House, uh, hopefully before Christmas, because he's going to be joining our new house, which will be minding, not minding, <laughs> taking care and looking out for Aboriginal young people. Oh, that's amazing news. Thanks for sharing, Christine. Um, now just talking about how the lockdown has affected the way that houses have operated. I know the four of you work amongst different departments. Um, so we'll start with you, Lexi. I'd just love to hear your thoughts um, from the perspective of the semi-independent living program. Yeah, so um, I believe that maintaining a sense of normality is really important, you know, despite the COVID-19 situation. Um, in the Silk House, we were making the young people during the HSC trial examination breakfasts and lunches, um, you know, we can we could um, only just imagine how difficult it was for the young people to be completing these exams online, you know, without their peers, without their teachers, um, you know, next to them and nurturing um, that, but also, but we did understand, you know, that it's such a crucial time for the young people. So, you know, we thought if we could lend a hand or just provide a caring gesture of just making some lunches, you know, we thought hopefully we can brighten the young people's days. Um, and also I, it was just so good because the young people sometimes would come and join us to make the lunches. Um, and, you know, it would just give them a break from their studying, from their, you know, exams, um, <laughs> no, from their studying. But um, yeah, so that was just amazing. And then it's actually become a really a really big hit because um we've incorporated it into our weekly schedule so now every tuesday we um make the young people lunches and yeah so it's cool if they come and join us um to make the lunches with us um and another thing is that during the lockdown um we actually found more time to do movie nights. We found more time to do activity nights and games nights. And it was so good because our case manager, um, the youth workers, uh, so myself and another youth worker and the young people, we all came together, you know, to watch movies. Like who doesn't want to watch movies whilst working, right guys? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just incredible. And just getting to have fun with the young people is just probably one of my favourite things about working at Stephen Stone House. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Lexi. And it's it's great to know, like even during a lockdown, that you know, going back to the theme of tonight, connection, it's still finding ways that we can really connect through through simple things like chores and movie nights. So that's great to hear. Natasha, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the lockdown has affected the way that um houses operate from residential houses for you. Yeah, so the lockdown has undoubtedly affected the way the houses used to operate previously. And a prime example of that is having external members coming, coming in and out of the house. So that even includes staff from other programs. So without that, um, what we realised was we didn't want the young people to feel isolated or anything like that. So we, as a residential house, um, would do certain activities to keep connected. And a prime example of that is maintaining cultural connections. So what our young people like to do is um, every so often they would choose a particular culture or country and we would have what we call a cultural night. So that includes a young person cooking particular foods from that culture and then we'd all sit together around the table and share stories from that country or culture, interesting facts, and even have a, and even have a go at talking and speaking in that language as well. So fun little games like that. Um, another example of maintaining cultural connections is maintaining um, cultural connections with the Indigenous community and educating ourselves on that, which is directly in line with Stepping Stone House's Reconciliation Action Plan. So not too long ago, we had a movie night where the staff and young people um, watched The Rabbit Proof Fence. And we are continuing to watch movies that educate ourselves on Indigenous stories and voices. So ultimately, while these amazing Indigenous community events were no longer running over the past couple of months due to COVID restrictions, we as a residential house made sure we were still we as a residential house made sure that we were still participating in certain activities that helped us um, stay connected to certain cultures and in turn that helped us connect with each other. Amazing thanks for sharing that Natasha and Trey as one of two Aboriginal youth workers at Stepping Stone House how have you found that the lockdown has affected the way that houses operate? Yeah so you know Stepping Stone House has hired me as one of two Aboriginal youth workers, which is great. And um, with that, I'm able to bring a sense of culture and cultural activities into the organization. 
And one of those I was able to implement prior to lockdown happening, where I take any and all young people who wish to be a part of it on a walk down to one of the local parks there. And, um, you know, we do a sunrise ceremony where we give thanks for what we have and show gratitude for whatever they would like to give gratitude for. One of the young, one of the young people that I work with, Sarah, um, has really shown so much appreciation for the walk and was always so eager to get down there and do the ceremony because it was such a great way for her to start the day. You know, unfortunately, because of COVID and the restrictions and stuff, um, we had to put a pause on everything. Um, you know, and that really affected Sarah in a big way. Um, you know, so now that everything is kind of easing back and coming back to normal, um, hopefully we can get down there and get the sunrise ceremonies up and running again. Exciting. Thanks for sharing that, Trey. Um, we're just going to touch on one more topic in this panel discussion. Have there been new opportunities that have arisen from lockdown that would not have otherwise uh, existed? Obviously, there's a lot of change that goes on and there might be some positive things that come out of it as well. So we'll start with you, Lexi. Yeah, um, so when one of our young people first moved into Silk, they didn't really have, um, you know, a lot of social connections and they didn't really, um, you know, engage in social events or activities. Um, however, we had a Christmas in July event this year, which was um, done virtually. And um, this young person actually actively participated in the event by reading a joke. Um, and to me, I was just so proud of this young person because it really showcased their growth. Um, and I really believe that because it was done virtually and online, I really believe that this young person was felt, you know, safe enough to join in and, you know, if they needed to step away and not be, um, you know, be there anymore, then that was, you know, that was um, fine. And as well, you know, they saw familiar faces and, you know, had their peers around. Um, and yeah, so this young person and I were having a conversation not too long ago and I asked them what, you know, the most memorable um thing at Stepping Stone House was this year and, and this year in general um they actually said to me that it was the Christmas in July event and to me that just blew me away because you know I just it was just like wow it was uh, it was honestly unreal to hear that um and yeah so and they had and the young person also had fun so that was like an extra bonus for me um and another new opportunity that has arisen this year um is that we've really had time um during the lockdown sorry we've really had time to dedicate time to self-care with the young people and I believe that self-care is really important for the mind the body the soul you know so important and you know often we may lack um self-care so you know especially for busy and overwhelmed just like our young people um with their HSC examinations so um yeah it was really cool to just meet with them weekly and be like hey what do you want to do this week and then they were able to tell us what they wanted to do um which to me was just incredible and yeah so we completed things like going for walks um you know around the block um going grabbing coffee um you know doing some uh beauty facial masks and yeah so thanks Lexi um we will we'll finish this panel discussion with your thoughts Christine yeah sure so I suppose um a lot of things that I noticed over the lockdown just actually came from supporting the independent living program and how important it is to support young people over the age of 18. Stephen Stone House actually supports young people up to the age of 25, which is amazing because I don't know about you, but I definitely wasn't an adult or independent at 18. Were you, Kieran? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, it's just been amazing um, that we can support our over um, 18s and up to the age of 25. I support a young girl a, named Cynthia. And since turning 18, she's got her full driver license, graduated as a nurse, got a full-time job, and like she credits this to Step in Stone House. I also have been lucky to do a training tool there over the last few days with one of my coworkers. And it's this star, and we got to see how far like our young people have actually come since turning the age of 18 through our living skills. Just the support of staff has just been amazing. So yeah, it was one of the things we really, really noticed was just how much we need to continue to support um, all of our young people. So yeah, thanks, Kieran. Thanks so much, Christine. And thank you very much to the entire team for all your anecdotes and insights. Um, I did just have communication with Stepping Stone House as well, and they are very thankful to uh, Joe Cameron one more time for 
uh, donating an extra $20,000. Unbelievable. So thank you again to Joe Cameron and everyone at Goodman Foundation um, and everyone here tonight as well for your wonderful donations. We are going to be doing some live questions now. So just bear with me for one moment while I check what the audience questions have. Um, a question for Christine. What's been your favorite lockdown activity with the young people? Oh gosh, like too many. Like I've been practicing TikTok dances. I don't know, but like everyone knows I'm useless at that singing. Uh, painting I've had like too much like too many guys <laughs> <laughs> well here's a question for the whole team um so we'll start with you Lexi what is everyone looking forward to in 2022 once New South Wales opens up some more really looking forward to the new opportunities that we're going to have with the young people, you know, to take them out to different places, you know, to, to be able to gain new experiences with the young people. I really am looking forward to that um, more than anything, to be honest with you, you know, I feel like we've just been so like just stuck in the house. So I'm really, really excited to get, get out and experience new things with the young people myself as well. Amazing. And Christine? Um, gosh, I'm looking forward to a lot of things, but I actually can't wait to go on a camp with all of our, our young people. Unfortunately, this year due to COVID, we had like our camp cancelled probably two, four, too many times. So I can't wait to get away with all the young people and staff and go on a camp and just have so much fun with everyone. Amazing. Now, we've got one more question here. I'll start with you, Trey. Uh, it is for the whole team. What's everyone's favourite part of working at Stepping Stone House with the young people? Um, wow, it's a pretty tough question. But I think for me personally, like one of my most favourite things about working with the young people is that they just, they just bring out the best of you as a youth worker, you know what I mean? Like I never really thought um, that I'd get to where I am in the position of being a youth worker, you know, like I've had my own experiences with youth homelessness um, way back when. And now to be in a position of having that lived experience and being able to share that with, you know, some of the young people that I work with and just being able to build their relationships is just so special. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's something I never ever thought would happen, but I'm here now and, you know, I think, yeah, it's just, it's so amazing. I, yeah, it's what, yeah. Amazing. And how about you, Natasha? What's your favourite part of working at Stepping Stone House? The first thing that comes to mind is probably the growth of the young people. So with young people that I've been working with for about two years, a year or two years, um, just seeing the place that they were at when they were first at Stepping Stone House versus now is just absolutely incredible. Um, this could be little things like not too long ago, um, I was having a conversation with a young person about anxiety and we were talking about strategies that had really helped. Um, and I think about a year later, she told me, oh, I use that all the time and it helps me so much. So it was just really beautiful and heartwarming um, to see that the young people are learning and growing so much. Um, and the other thing I would say as well is learning alongside the young people and having a laugh about things. Um, one thing that I really enjoy is getting cooking lessons from the young people in the house. So yeah, just learning things together or learning things about car parts or like engine oil or things like that. So that always puts a big smile on my face. Amazing. I definitely need cooking lessons. I've learned in lockdown I'm not a good cook. So um, thank you guys uh, for all your wisdom, all your insights, anecdotes. Uh, much appreciated. I hope you all learned as much as I did right now. That was great. To cap that off, I'd like to welcome Ronaldo Malatalo, Stepping Stone House ambassador and recent winner of the NRL prestigious Ken Stephen Medal for his work in the community. So um, he's done a lot for Stepping Stone House. Stepping Stone House, love him. So Ronaldo, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, hello, can you hear me? All good? Can you hear me? All good? All right, thanks. Um, thanks everyone for having me tonight. Um, this is my fourth uh, Sleeping Under the Stars event. I've been lucky enough to be a part of it for a while now. Um, now I know, to many people, my life may look um, you know, very glamorous and you know, under the, the big lights and under the cameras and stuff like that. Um, and it hasn't always been like that. Um, I've, I've, I've come from a disadvantaged 
uh, you know, background as well. And I felt like I was a, I was a disadvantaged kid. And I had love and, and connection uh, within my house and, and my community. Mum and dad split when I was a bit younger. And that was a bit tough. My mum took that on upon herself. Uh, four of us lived in a um, leaking garage uh, for a couple of years. Um, you know, mum and dad made, made do with what, what we had. Um, I probably saw things that uh, kids shouldn't see as well. Um, and that, that was pretty tough for myself. I, mean, I learned how to grow up at a, at a real young age. Uh, you know, when, when kind of that things, things like that happened, um, you know, I, was, I, was, I was lucky enough to have a mum that um, saw opportunity in Australia. And uh, by the age of 14, I was, I was lucky enough to move over here um, and make the big change. Um, obviously, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, obviously, you know, moving to Australia has um, changed my life massively. You know, I fell in love with uh, rugby league, um, and I found something that I really cherished and loved. Um, and, and at the age of sixteen, I was lucky enough to get signed by Cronulla Sharks. Um, I lived. I, I came came down to to Sydney from Brisbane. Um, and I lived with um, Jason and. And Emma Jaredic, obviously the CEO of Stepping Stone House uh, for four years. And I, I was lucky enough uh, to be under them. You know, such loving people. And um, Emma was, was massive for me. She played the mother role. Um, and Jace played that father role that I never had as well in my life. Um, and now, uh, now, now down the track of being lucky enough to sign a big contract in my life. Um, and you know, really set my family up and really set myself up um, for the big endeavors in my life now. And, I always said to myself that you know when I get to this this opportunity here, um, that it's my turn to be that superhero that my mom was for me and um, be that superhero that you know the young kids out there the need, um, and always you know, I always advocate for it and um, you know and I'm I feel like I'm in a very privileged spot, um, and I've you know, I'm in a spot that I can make some powerful moves as well and and use uh, use my platform. Um, and I feel like we've done a great job um, as a as a collective, as Stepping Stone House and um, you know, the media team behind um, Liz, everyone behind the scenes that have you know, gone out of their way to help me um, push my message. And you know, this is what I'm passionate about and this is what I love. So um, it's awesome to have them there as well. Um, now I love being an ambassador of Stepping Stone House. It's who I am, it's, it's who I want to you know, represent. Um, and Stepping Stone House is everything that um, my mum has drilled into me. And, and you know, I've, I've now you know, carried uh, Stepping Stone House with me for the last two years as an ambassador, and I've been very privileged and honoured to do this, do so as well. Um, you know, as long as, as well as everyone else here, and you know, all, to all the sponsors, all the, um, all the people that you know, go behind the scenes to help out. Um, you know, they're lovely, and you know, listening to some of the stories here, and and everyone has put in and contributed in some sort of way. It's, it's awesome, and um, you know, that that kind of thing touches my heart, and that's where I get my fulfilment from. Um. You know, I've been lucky enough to, you know, my contact with the kids was, you know, through, you know, paddle boarding, stand-up paddle boarding and, and having yoga sessions with the kids um, and also fundraising. And you know, that's, that's my way of giving back and you know, I feel very lucky to be able to do so. And, you know, these kids are awesome. And you know, for me, it's, it's who I am and um, you know, it's, it's what I'm very proud of. Um, and you know, that, that medal that I won on the you know, last couple of weeks ago, sorry, um, it wasn't my award. It was for all the kids back at Stepping Stone House. Um, all the staff, all the sponsors behind it um, that have contributed to to make this um, make this work, and you know, as a as a person um, uh, that's in my position, that's our job. I feel like it's our job, but um, to go out and, and seek the help that these ki these kids need and and these organisations need, and you know, for as long as I'm playing, um, I've, I've given my word to to always um, help out, you know, these events um, and, and anything else these kids need, um, whether it's shoes or, or stuff like that, um, you know, just taking burdens off these little kids' um, these little kids' lives and you know, giving them the best shot at it, um, like, like I did. So um, if you, you know if you've ever considered um, being a volunteer or helping out, you know, I, I strongly believe in um, volunteering your time and, and, and helping in any way, and um, I think that's important. Uh, for everyone out there that's listening, um, I, I definitely feel like it's an important part for us to to give back to you know, these young kids and um, really help them get going in their life and just raise some funds. And you know, it's an awesome event tonight. It's been an awesome event, and I can't wait to um, sleep outside. Mum's looking at me like I'm crazy, but um, all the all the brothers and I'm trying to get them out as well. So yeah, it's awesome. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Ronaldo. Such an inspiring story and everyone at Stepping Stone House is so grateful for all your support. So thanks again. Guys, we've got something really special coming up next and I'm a big music fan. So not having to go into a music event for ages, I'm quite excited about this one. We're about to play a video message from a very special guest to speak to you all. So without further ado, please welcome the iconic Jimmy Barnes. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me here today. Supporting disadvantaged youth is particularly close to my heart and I understand how important it is to have a positive role model while growing up. I'd ask you to dig deep for Step and Stone House and ask your friends and family to sponsor you and help us raise much needed funds to end youth homelessness. This is so important. Thank you, Jimmy. What a nice guest cameo to the night. Um, and don't think it's over yet. We have now got another guest, another person who has spent time in the Stepping Stone House program. Uh, if you were part of the Sleep Under the Stars event in the earlier years, you might remember Sauna. She's an inspirational former resident of Stepping Stone House. So Sauna is gonna be joining us right now to share what she's been up to. So welcome Sauna. Hi guys, hi everyone. Not sure if everyone can hear me, but I'm hoping everyone can hear me okay. Um, just wanna take this opportunity to just thank everyone that's participated, um, donated to today's fundraising event. I myself personally appreciate um, everyone and all the contributions. Um, so I've been asked to sleep, speak at this year's Sleeping Under the Stars event. So, Again, I'm a former Stepping Stone uh, House resident. Firstly, I would like to thank God and Stepping Stone House for the opportunity to share with you all today. I was a resident between 2015 to 2017, and I am now part of the SSH aftercare program, which supports SSH graduates who have transitioned into independence and their own private rental. Before SSH, I was a confused young woman and had no idea where my life was heading. I had no plans, goals, or ideas of what I wanted to do with my life. From the age of 16, I was homeless, couch surfing from one friend's house to another, had no genuine connections, no close friends or family. I was exposed to drugs and activities beyond my control. My life only became stable when I arrived at the Stepping Stone house. Five years ago, I spoke to many of you at the 2016 Sleep Under the Stars event and that was under the Sydney Bridge, Harbour Bridge. At the event, Angus Kennard from Kennard's Hire approached me and offered to fund my events management course that I wanted to do, but was struggling to find money to do it. On that night, never in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined where I would be today. Stepping Stone House and the team made sure I was living in a safe environment where I could interact with people, which enabled me to develop meaningful therapeutic connections with staff and my housemates and those outside the house. I established long lasting relationships at the Stepping Stone House, which I still cherish today and hope, for the, and hope to for the rest of my life. I still enjoy speaking at the SSH, I still enjoy speaking to some of the SSH staff, directors and my previous housemates. One of those housemates I consider my sister who have birthed my beautiful goddaughter. I graduated from the SSH program with hundreds of life skills, resilience developed through adventurous education courses we did and the confidence to venture into independence. Moving to Canberra was the first step. Although I had no plans, I believed in myself. I now had a second chance. I was ambitious, I had goals, and most importantly, I had the support of genuine people and SSH family. I'm sure many of you have, have heard the saying, when it's meant to be, everything always falls into place. Well, that's exactly how I felt. Within months of moving to Canberra, I secured a contract with the ACT government. One year later, I secured a permanent role with the ACT government. Having completed the course, Kennard's hired funded, I also registered my event management company and made additional income managing my own event over the years, often working seven days a week. So where am I today? 
I'm very happy to share that I've recently been blessed with a promotion within the ACT government, with, within the medical admin department. I always say what God has planned for you, no one can take from you. I still reside in Canberra with my best friend who also recently moved. We live in a beautiful home that we both love. We never lack in terms of basic living essentials and my credit is over 900. My savings are building and by God's grace, I will purchase my own property soon. I was told the sleeping under the stars thing this year was connection and boy, am I a great example of that. I have built some of the most meaningful connections in the recent years. I connected with my biological mother who lives in Liberia. I worked very hard to give her a better life. Prior to SSH, we had no relationship. I have maintained connections with my ex Stepping Stone House case managers. We try to catch up whenever I am in Sydney. I personally believe individual connections shape our identities. The way we treat those around us is what helps us create a meaningful life. Firstly, I don't think I can thank SSH and Sleep Under the Stars fundraisers enough for everything they have done for me and other youth that have entered the SSH program over the years. On a personal note, I would like to speak to Diane and Debbie, my two SSH mothers. Thank you so much for believing in me when no one else did. Hearing you both tell me you're proud of the women I have become has made this whole journey worth it. Most importantly, thank you, God, for your love and grace. So to conclude, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this year's Sleeping Under the Stars event. Thank you for all the fundraisers you have done so far. And I'd like to, ask, to um, ask you all to keep fundraising so that you can help someone's life just like me. You can truly change someone's life forever. And actually, I have a photo from when I spoke. This is Ken Ed when he gave me, um, back in 2016 when I first spoke, um, and I told Diane and Debbie I'll show you this. So this, I still have this from 2017. It's my certificate of graduation in Stepping Stone dated back in 2017. And I cherish this forever. And I also cherish these amazing memories and I keep them with me and I will cherish them forever. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to my friends and family. Thank you to Stepping Stone House, Jason, Debbie and Diane and all the workers for everything. Thank you for changing the life of myself and so many people that I know. Um, and I just hope that you guys continue to enjoy your night and thank you so much for everything. Have a blessed night. Thank you so much, Shauna. Congratulations on all your success. Everyone at Stepping Stone House is very proud of you. You're an inspiration. So thank you again. I'm sure Jason agrees with me, the CEO of Stepping Stone House. So let's bring him back for a few more words and prize giveaways. Jason, over to you. Hi, good day. My, I've just been told my width is low, so hopefully you can all see and hear me okay. Um, yeah, that was fantastic. Sauna, we are so proud of you and you know we are. So just uh, what you've been able to achieve since leaving Stepping Stone House is just fabulous. And uh, it's down to you in the end, as it is for all our children. Well done. Um, I'd also just like to say, Joe, thank you so much. $20,000 has taken our total up to a million and 90. We're just sort of eight grand, I think, short of our 1.1 stretch, stretch target. So that's very generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, the fun parts to come, I'm going to be announcing the prizes in a moment. I just wanted to thank a few more people. Um, Max and Joan Connery, the founders of Stepping Stone House, they always say it was a group, but these are the two key people. Thanks so much, and, and I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Um, we've got new supporters who've come on board this year. Sean, Rail Team, the Australian Performing Arts College have done an incredibly incredible job fundraising as well. But I'd also like to thank our nine committee members from Macquarie, Bank, who've done an incredible job, and we have got some handsome dollar for dollar matching coming from them as well. Renato, you spoke extremely well, um, and um, also congratulations on winning the Ken Evans Medal for your contribution to NRL. And you beat every other NRL player in the whole of Australia to win that award. Well done, and thank you for your support for our children and young people. Unsung heroes, we've got a few of those. Matt Lewis has been doing these events for six years, been working his butt off fundraising. And uh, he also has managed to secure four grants for us as well from Westpac. 
So well done, Matt, really appreciate it. Um, there's a young girl, 12 year old called Tara, who is doing this year's Sleep Under the Stars. She pretty much strong armed her family into registering. And then she asked all her friends, instead of giving her birthday presents to donate it to Sleep Under the Stars in lieu of presents, as a 12-year-old Tara, I'm proud of you. Well done. You're an amazing young lady, and thanks for having such a good heart. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody for joining us, and um, I'll go into the prizes now. We're running tight to schedule here. Uh, first of all, honorable mentions uh, in terms of really great individual fundraising. Andrew Bolivant, uh, Fizz Tyling, uh, Dean Jensen, Monica Zen, Anita Main again, and thanks for doing such a great job with the DHL team. Matt Lewis, Brock, Brock Dixon, Rob Davey, Bart Hanley, Graham Moore, Spring, and Ronaldo himself donated his prize for the Ken Chapel, which was very generous, uh, Ken Chapel Award, which was very generous. So in third place for um, the individual fundraiser of the year, is Mike Carr, congratulations from DHL Express, over $9,000 raised. Uh, you get a, a skincare e-gift card. I'm sure you're looking forward to that, Mike. In second place, it's a sail and sip experience on the harbor for an afternoon on a 33-foot techno, techno hull for five guests. Phil Corcoran from DHL Express, congratulations. The, there was only $2 between second and third place. And uh, well done to you, Phil, and thanks for leading your team so brilliantly over all these seven years of doing the sleep out. In first place, uh, from Stepping Stone House, Monica Essi. Uh, she raised over $9,000, worked her network brilliantly, and you've got a night for two in the Park Hotel, Park Hyatt Hotel, overlooking the harbour. Congratulations, Monica. You really earned that. You got lots and lots of uh, donations. Well done. I'd like to move now to the highest team fundraiser. Honorable mentions too. We've got um, the APAC uh, Performing Arts. We haven't met you yet. We look forward to doing that. Cronulla Sharks cannot self storage again. Sustainability Consulting, incredible guys, over 10 grand, well done. Um, Sony, Universal Sony Pictures, well done. And Adobe, led, led by Suzanne and Sundar. Brilliant effort, guys, really appreciate it. So drum roll in third place was for the eight week fitness health sessions with a personal trainer. It's the Stepping Stone House, one team, one dream, $24,000 raise. Well done guys. In second place, which is the prize is a stand up paddle boarding experience, a river experience together with a picnic on the journey is the Goodman team. Congratulations, 37,000. Thanks to Joe, Chucky, an extra 20 in there as well. Uh, we, we look forward to uh, taking you out on that on that trip. And in first place, an afternoon sailing on the classic Fidelis racing boat that won the Sydney Hobart. Um, the sailing experience will just be in Sydney Harbour. It's for and the winners are who raised fifty two thousand dollars as a team. DHL Express, incredible guys, well done. Um, if you haven't snagged a prize, don't worry, you still can. We were contacted by an organisation we hadn't heard of until last week called Palace. Capital, they have offered $50,000 matching for all donations from now to the end of the weekend. So guys, keep fundraising and we'll get way over this two point, sorry, correction, $1.1 .1 million stretch goal. Just incredible and Palace Capital and Selena, we really appreciate your very generous offer there. So keep going, so keep posting, tagging, texting, calling, and let's see if we can get even more in there, more in there. At the end of October, we will actually announce the star of the year for Sleep Under the Star for the person or individual that's contributed most to this year's, this year's um, event. Someone who has you know, gone above and beyond to sharing posts, getting involved, being, being, being the actual essence of what this event's about. You will now see an image on the screen, I hope, or coming soon. Um, and basically what it is, it's a nice vision of next year's event. We're going to be next year, as you can see there, at the Taronga Zoo. It's already booked. It's one year yesterday, 14th of October. So please, everybody book in. You'll be sleeping to the sound of lions in the background. And uh, we're really excited about that. Thanks again to all our event sponsors, our partners who matched, everyone who spoke, and everyone who asked questions, and Kieran for being a fantastic MC. It's been an honor to have you all. And if you're sleeping under the stars tonight, good luck. And thank you so much for all, all your support. Thank you.
Thanks, Jason. And congratulations to all of tonight's prize winners. It sounds like it's still worth chasing the tails though. So keep those campaigns going because this event has kicked some serious goals tonight. Uh, the winner of the most creative shelter prize will be announced on Facebook in an hour's time at 9 p.m. So thank you so much for joining us and for your company as well. I have just been informed by Stepping Stone House. There was a few questions uh, that we did miss on the chat room. So they're gonna get back to you with those answers within the next week as well. So thanks very much for your support and for asking those questions and getting involved as well. If you're sleeping out tonight, may you get some sleep, maybe not. Um, some time spent reflecting, I guess is always healthy. And to all the youngsters across Australia tonight who need somewhere safe to go, Stepping Stone House is always here for you. So thank you again and good night.